Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, we thank you for saving our soul. Father God, we ask you today to forgive us of any sins we've done. Father God, um, we ask you to bless the ones that are reading it and bless the ones that are hearing it. Holy Spirit, we welcome you onto this podcast. We ask you to pour out your wisdom and knowledge unto us. Uh, Father God, we also ask you to to help us apply this devotional to our lives. Father God, we ask you to get the increase while I get the decrease. Please help me to teach in the spirit and not in the flesh. In Jesus' name, amen. So the verse today is Luke 11, 11 through 13. Your fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if your sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Subject, I'll be satisfied. Christian truths, I'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like. I'm content. I'm seeking God. I'm releasing my doubt. I'm walking his will. When I was younger, I always wanted a drum set. And I asked my parents for it. They said no. So they got me a guitar instead, and I didn't really like the guitar as much as I cared to have drums. My dad told me it was loud and it was going to be it's going to disturb the whole house. At the time of asking, I didn't care. <laughs> I wanted that drum set. I soon forgot about the drum set, moved past it, and like any child, they want what they want. Sometimes we can ask for things and we don't think about how it will affect others or ourselves. We just so focus on what we ask for. And if we don't get it, we're too upset to think rationally. So we ignore all the signs of God saying no. And we focus on what we want. And maybe we, we hear him and we won't, we still want what we want. The verse is telling us today that a good father would not give their children something harmful, something wrong, something that will harm them in any way. A good father will give their children something that will bring them joy or fulfill them. The father in this verse gave a fish instead of a snake, an egg instead of a scorpion. We might see the things we are asking for as a blessing or something serious and real, but God sees them as a distraction and a hindrance. Sometimes we have to be grateful for that. We serve a God that looks at our overall picture and, and just the just not just the here and now. And honestly, that's how some of us is. We look at the here and now and what can we get for the moment and not how this will affect us long term. We're so blinded by what we want more of than being grateful and content. The verse before this one says this, verse 9. And so I tell you, I tell you, keep on asking and you receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Jesus is telling us to ask and we will receive. And when we seek him, we will find him. And when we knock, it will be open to us. A lot of us seek just for an hour, maybe a day, that's it. Or we seek until we get what we want. But Jesus is saying, seek me and you will receive and find. But are we seeking with our whole heart? Are we seeking for the right reason? And we asking for the right things with the right intentions. We all have intentions behind asking anything we're asking for. For example, with the drum set, I wanted, I wanted it because it was something I seen other people do. And I, I meddled around in it just a tad bit. And honestly, my parents knew it wasn't something I was going to keep doing. And for them to pay all that money and I only use it a couple of times was a waste. And on top of being loud, it was a no. It took me growing to understand it. Just like us, we must ask God what his reasons are because he could give us something different. God wants us to be happy. He wants us to feel that we could come to him about anything. But if we're asking, doesn't align with his will for our lives, we won't receive it. Sometimes we have to grow in God to see the things we desire wasn't of him. Or was it in his will? First Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. God has a plan for our lives. And believe it or not, God has a plan for us to prosper. He has a plan for us not to be the tail, but to be the head. He has plans for us to seed in the way he wants of us. Verse 8, but I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. In this verse, Jesus was telling a story about a man who went to his friend's house late to borrow bread. And the friend told him to leave him alone because he was late. 
he and his family were in bed and he says, I couldn't help you. Jesus tells them that if the man keeps knocking, the friend will help him because of his persistence. And that's what God wants us to do. Maybe God won't give us this because it's not his will, but he will give us that if we keep asking. Keep calling on the name of God. Don't seek, don't stop, don't seek him and start seeking him. Start seeking him every day with a heart of belief and no doubt. We have to stop allowing our doubt to kill our blessings and belief. We must stand on God and believe that what he says in his word is true. Do you believe that? That is true? Today, whatever you lack, go to God. Whatever you need, go to God. Don't allow what you see to stop you. Allow your desires and his word to keep you seeking him for answers. God is ready to bless us and so ready to give, but we give up so soon because we get angry with him because he won't budge. He doesn't have to. When I was younger, the choir used to sing this song. It says, any way you bless me, Lord, I'd be satisfied. Any way I'd be satisfied. We must be satisfied with what he gives us, but seek him with your heart knowing he will give it to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you have done for us. We ask today that you forgive us of the sins we have done. Lord, we ask that you allow us to grow in you. We want to show you in, show we want you to show us anything that's in our heart that's not of you. Today we learn how to seek your will and to be grateful for everything. Sometimes that's hard to do, but we ask you to complete us and help us to be settled in you. Be satisfied. Lord, create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit within us today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So the topic today is I'd be satisfied. With today's society, is so much that we can go after. It's so much we can have. It is so much you can do. Uh, I can remember that it used to be like for gaming, for instance, it used to be just PlayStation or Nintendo. That's it. Now you have Xbox, you have VR sets, you have this, you have that, you have tablets, you have so much. Even with listening to different apps, uh, with the podcast, you would think it stops at Spotify and Apple. No, it's Pandora, it's iHeartRadio, it's YouTube, it's, it's podcasts, it's, it's Podbean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> I have them all right here. It's Google Podcasts, Player FM, Audible. You, you get my point. It's so much. And those things could be a distraction. Anything we, we want could be a distraction. That's why we need to ask God, hey, God, do you want me to have this? Do you want me to go after this career? Do you want me to have this house? Do you want me to have this car? Because he looks at the bigger picture. But also with us asking for this, we must be patient and know that somehow we won't get an instant answer. And a lot of us nowadays don't like to wait. We have talked about this. A lot of us want it right now when we ask for it right now. But God does not wants us to be like the, the guy in the parable that went and asked his friend, hey, can you give me some bread? He said, no, go away. He's like, let me knock again. Hey, can I have some bread? No, go away. And Jesus told him, he said, he said, look at the story. He said, the friend kept asking him for a loaf of bread. The, the friend would sooner or later get tired with his persistence ask, asking and give it to him. And that's what he's asking us to do. He says, seek me, you will find me. Let's actually go to that, that parable if we can. Let's go to Luke 11. If you have your Bibles, go to Luke 11. Okay, I'm going to go verse um, 9. Let's start off with verse 9. And so I tell you, keep on asking, you receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. See, is okay. Let's let's go to the parable. Sorry, my Bible didn't have the parable marked, so I thought maybe I missed looked over it. Okay, so suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight. This is verse five. Wanting to be wanting to borrow three loaves of bread, you say to him, "A friend of mine just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing to to feed him." And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, "Don't bother me. The door is locked at night." It's night, my friends, my family and I are asleep in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. Verse 9. And if so, and so I tell you, keep on asking and you receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will open to you. Verse 10, for everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks, find, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. 
See, he's telling us here, if you keep asking me, I will give it to you. It, see, that man, he could have said, hey, you know, go away. And he did. He said, go away. I'm sleeping. My family's sleeping. The door's locked and it's nighttime. Why are you here? Why are you here at my home? Go away. And the guy was like, I need this bread. I have someone that came in. I need bread, please. And because he was shameless and persistent, he, he went in and gave it to him. Sometimes that's what God's waiting for us to do, to be humble and say, I need this. I need this more than anything. But we also have to understand that when we pray, we must pray inside the will of God. And that's what a lot of times we forget. Now, God loves radical faith. I have, I have noticed this. You have noticed he loves radical faith. That when you ask, and you're like, I know he's going to give it to me. And some people get it. Boom. Now, some of us have radical faith and our intentions behind it is not good. And God sees it. God's like, okay, I know what your intentions are with this gift. I know what your intentions are with this house. I know what your intentions are with this car. I know what your intentions are to having more money. And some of us, God haven't blessed us with these things because he, our intentions and our heart needs to change. That's why we need to grow every day in God to find out what in me that I need to change. Is it, is it wanting more? Is it covetousness? Is it the lust of the eye? Is it is it per, spirit of perversion? Is it jealousy? Is it anger? Is it a spirit of, uh, of, of anything? Whatever's in me, please remove it. And so when we, we remove these things, we start praying in his will. We start looking at things that we want because the things that he want for our life, we start desiring it because we're lined up with his will. That's the thing that we have to pray in his will for our lives. Like, let's just say, for instance, this ministry, I said, God, I, I, I want more people to teach you. And I know that's in his will because he wants me to teach. He tells all, all of us to teach the world, to baptize and teach the world. So I'm praying within his will. But let's just say, I say, God, I want to open up a church and I want to, 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 to have a, a jet and I want to have a limousine. And I, he's like, wait a minute. I was okay with the church, maybe. But with the jet and with the limousine, no, you're getting distracted. You're going to be distracted with this jet and limousine because you're going to think you'll be able to fly everywhere, drive everywhere in this limousine. You won't make time for me. See, uh, he, he's going to look at everything. Is that in his will for you? No. Is it in his will for me to, to ride around in a jet? Probably not. Because he know I'd probably go everywhere. <laughs> but seriously, we have to always go to him first. That's why a lot of people get so irritated because he won't budge. He won't move because they're like, oh, he, he must don't love me. No, stop saying that. He loves us so dearly, so much. That's why he don't give it to us. He don't want us to be steered away from him, but he wants us to come back and recalibrate and say, this is what he wants for me. And whatever he wants for me, I'd be satisfied. And a lot of us don't know how to be satisfied because we don't know how to be content with the things he has given us. That's another thing he wants us to work on. Be content with what he have given you. Some of us look at our homes and we say, oh, I have just a four bedroom, two, house, two bath house. And I want a six bedroom, three bath house. And you have someone over here that has one bedroom, one bath. And they're just as content. But you have four bedroom, two bath, and you're still complaining. Be content with what he blessed you with. Show him that you love what he got you, but you want more. But when we sit there and we complain and we don't never lift up our voice and say, thank you, God, for the house. Thank you, God, for the two bathrooms. Thank you, God, for the four bedrooms. Thank you for allowing me to live in a brick house. Thank you for letting, letting me live in a safe neighborhood. But some of us are so greedy and we have the spirit of greed that we don't see what he's given us is such a blessing. It's some people out here that live in on park benches. It's this guy. I'm waiting to see him. Um, again, because a, a God had asked me to do something, I can't disclose it because um, I, I'm not willing. He's told me not to say. But this guy, I see him walk around the city. He has just a blanket over his arms, and he has a cup of coffee, and he's just walking around. And as windy as it is right now, he's content. Me, I, I had to I had to go to Walmart to get me another hoodie. I had to go get me some sweatpants because I, I wasn't content with what I had. I, I wanted to be more warmer. But he had just a blanket and some thin pants on. And he was content. 
how many of us could be in that situation and not be miserable. He was so content with just a cup of coffee he had. I want to be that content. And sometimes I'm not that content if I could be uh, totally transparent. How many of us are not content with the things that we have? Some of us have so much, I'm going to raise my hand, that we don't even be content with what we have because we keep wanting more. Today, God has asked us to be content, be satisfied with what he gives you. But when you do ask, and it's okay to ask, when you do ask, don't be so upset if he don't move because there's something in your season that he wants you to learn. We all are in a season in our life right now that he wants us to learn. And, and we all have been in this season. It doesn't matter if the new year starts, to be honest with you. We all have, are in a season in our life that he wants us to take and say, what do you want me to do in this, in this season? What do you want me to change in the season? The day before yesterday, well, Monday, we, we talked about the highway to holiness. Maybe he wants you to be holy. Maybe he wants this. The, the, the uh, devotional after that was the, the what to be filled with the be let Jesus fill our path. Maybe he wants to fill our path with good things right now. Maybe he wants us to walk in some kind of calling. Maybe he wants to walk in a gift. Maybe he's waiting for us to ask for a certain gift to help us. Maybe he wants us more on our knees. Maybe he wants us to praise him more. Maybe just maybe he wants to commune with us more. We have to realize that a lot of times the things in this life is a distraction. I can say that I have a lot of things that's just, that could distract me. And I had to learn that I can't let these things come between me and God. I can't let these things come between me and praying to God. I can't let those things come between me and, and praying to him. Because people and things would do it so quick because that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to be distracted. But God, he's like the father in the verse today. He gave us an egg instead of a scorpion. That scorpion, which could be the house or anything else could be distracting, could, could hurt, hurt us or harm us. He, he Instead, he gave us a fish instead of a snake. He could give us anything to, to, to lead us away from him. But instead, he, he makes us, he gives us something to make us stay. He, he feeds us to make us stay. He open. He has us open our words so we can study it, show ourselves approved. You, you see, God is a good Father, and He He sees around the different things that the enemy has us so focused on, and some of us are so focused on more, 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 and we're not fo focused on. Let me settle. Let me sit and talk to Him. Let me settle. Let me figure out what He wants for me. How satisfied are you in your life? That song they used to sing. Uh, I loved it. I, I loved the rhythm of it because it was such an old school type of rhythm and jazz type of rhythm. And it said, anyway, you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied anyway. Anyway, I'll be satisfied. Like I said, I can't sing. But when I get upset that he doesn't give me what I want, that song pops in my head. That any way he bless me, I'll be satisfied. I won't let the things of this life make me so upset that I lose focus on him. That I think he hates me when he doesn't. Somehow we have to stop our emotions from railing up in us, from puffing up in us and, and make us think things that's not true. Believe today that God wants to help you through the moments that you have. God wants to, you to grow in the moments that you have. But he wants us to be content too. And he wants us also to understand in this devotional that if you ask, make sure you're praying in my will. And make sure you're persistent. Don't just pray for one day. Oh, he's not listening. I'm done. Let me just stop. He's not going to answer. No, be persistent. Keep asking. Because maybe right now, that's not what he wants you to have. Maybe in the future, he wants you to have that. So don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Keep knocking. Keep seeking. You will find out. I hope you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loved you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow whatever platform you're on. Remember to, to send to a family member or a friend. And remember, if you could, place it on your social media. Thank you. Be blessed.